This guy burst onto the scene in the early 80s and was the blueprint babyface. No frills, no gimmicks. He had the physique, the demeanor, and the athleticism. His in-ring work is responsible for many matches that would top a most exciting matches list. Your number three babyface, Ricky Steamboat. Definitely Ricky Steamboat. The guy can work unbelievable. He's a, a, a good guy. It's somebody that every heel would want to work with. And I think he was known all over the world for, you know, how he, how his matches were. You wanted to watch his matches. This is a little biased because I think Ricky Steamboat's the best of all time, babyface. I can argue that. I could take the point of argument with that, but I'm not going to because Ricky Steamboat, in my eyes, is the epitome of a gentleman, of a man, of a babyface. Steamboat was good. I mean, uh, I worked with Steamboat a lot of times. Um, there again, you're talking about the top five. I would say Tommy Rich should be up in there. I mean, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Uh, he's in the top ten of all time. Doesn't surprise me if that's high. Uh, I would say great baby faces far as in ring ability but as far as being over I think he's a little uh, I think it, I think he somebody put him on that list a little higher than he should be one of the greatest white now there's a different baby face that's a white meat baby face for his air good I mean he was the same the same I mean I'm I know of Ricky and seen some of his stuff because people that have seen any of my past interviews realize that I never watched wrestling growing up I was lucky and was in the right place at the right time. So I never watched a lot of that, but have seen footage of him and just the way he moves and the way he, you know, same thing again. Physical appearance it was great. He would, had that charisma charm. You know, he had a charm to him that people dug. Uh, now that surprises me, and I'm a big Ricky Steamboat fan, but it surprises me that he is above the rock. I, I, I would have to put, uh, I'd put Rock way ahead of Steamboat uh, because Rock, uh, and there again, I, I, I would even put uh, a guy like Tommy Rich ahead of, of Ricky Steamboat. Steamboat was not that big of a baby face in the WWF days. He was uh, underneath mid-card guy with the Intercontinental Championship. Now, does that make you a great baby face? Was he, was he good? Yes, he was. Jimmy Snooker was a great baby face when I worked with him. Uh, and I'm not knocking Ricky's work at all, but when you put it in perspective with great baby face, Dusty Rhodes was a great baby face in his era. Uh, so, so there was a, I don't know, the fans are kind of off a little bit on that list. Well, Ricky, again, there was a good looking guy. Um, smooth, good interviewer, sincere interviewer. And there's the case of the individuals you've already talked to. The people actually thought that they had to get behind Ricky. Because if he didn't, Murdoch was going to beat the crap out of him. Um, So-and-so was going to beat the crap out of him. So we got to give him some support. Mulligan was going to tear his throat out. So let's cheer for him. Come on. And he would respond by listening to that and, and coming up and making a little comeback and firing up, firing up. So they felt they're actively involved in that match. That's important. Ricky was a white meat Indian kid that you could beat to death. And people know he can take it, but they're also waiting for the comeback. So Ricky's, Ricky's your momentum builder in a match. One of the most silent, charismatic people I've ever met in my life. He's not a big or a great talker. He's an intelligent man. He's got a, a quiet charisma about him. And I think, you know, when he was the Dragon in the uh, WWF, that was probably his most over time. But I'm surprised that he's one notch over the rock. He just had that, that personality and the charisma out there that just captivated people, I thought. And it wasn't just because he was a good-looking guy. Uh, he just had that, just that presence in the ring that people just were drawn to. And, I mean, not only that, he could tell a story. He went out there, his psychology was fantastic. Like I said, he had the best arm drag in the business. Nobody's ever touched it. And um, just something about him just, you know, made you watch him. And uh, I, th I just thought he was one of the best. I still do. Oh, I miss him. I miss him. Um, 
He should also be up there on the list. He should be like number one. Your best arm drag and baby face ever in the business, ever, was Ricky Steamboat. Ricky Steamboat and I, uh, like a lot of other wrestlers, uh, uh, like to do wrestling imitations. And Ricky, Ricky loves my Pedro Morales. I would go, I am ready for any kind of action, baby. So anytime Ricky Steamboat would see me, and the other guy that did this was Bobby Heenan, would see me at ringside as he'd getting into the ring, he'd look around the ring, he'd see me with my camera ringside, and he'd go. One other time uh, with Ricky Steamboat, we did this around the horn in the Carolinas. Every time he'd wrestle Ernie Ladd, Steamboat would come into mad screaming and applause, and they'd be stalking each other, and he'd see me at ringside, and he'd come over and shake my hand, go like this, hey, Ricky, and the fans would go, yay. Ernie Lane would come over two minutes later to do that, and I'd pull the Ric Flair hand on him and go like this. And we did that, and Ernie Lane would go crazy, and Ricky Steamboat would start. So we did that everywhere, probably for about a year. He took such time. In 1980, when I was in North Carolina, I just broke into business, and uh, it was my first territory, took time to help me. Because I was this green guy coming up, and he would help me with my work in the ring, and I was a up-and-coming babyface at that time, so, um, yeah, it was, uh, hey, I love him, I love him like a brother, and I'll do anything in the world for him, actually. Ricky Steamboat's the man, except I won't put him over again. Well, you knew you were going to have a great match, you knew you weren't going to get hurt, and you knew you were going to, you know, if you were going to go 20 minutes, you know it was 20 minutes from top to bottom. It wasn't sit down and relax for 10 minutes and have a match. It, it, you knew you were going to work, and that was the best feeling in the world when you could have a match like that. He's your 60-minute baby face. He can kick ass. He can get his butt kicked. He can kick butt and get his butt kicked. The next thing you know, you stop him at the 40-minute mark. Now you're killing him. Next thing you know, then they believe he could pull out the win at 60 minutes. That's Ricky. He was right up there. If, if Flair is asked who his greatest opponent was, uh, uh, usually uh, the, 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 the pat answer is Rick Steamboat because he could do anything in the ring. He had the athleticism, had the look, and uh, any time that the other wrestlers come out after their matches and after they're dressed and sit down to watch, that, that makes a statement. And Ricky Steamboat had that kind of ability. WrestleMania 3 is probably one of my favorite matches of all time with him and Randy Savage and, and, and the fact that he always uh, fought not to lose and fought to win and it looked like he was fighting an uphill battle and just his comebacks and, and his facials and the way he worked was was amazing but as far as um, even even in relevance like if you take where he was in 1984 or 5 whenever that run was to even The Rock now I don't think they compare 4 and 3 I think uh, I think Ricky Steamboat's a little higher in that list maybe top 10 of all time but I wouldn't go top five. I, I mean, just being in the ring with him and learning different things from him every now and again, or when he was teaching the other girls, Ricky Steamboat, um, it just, I, I don't know, you could just see it on him. And you just loved that face of his. And you loved how he moved and how, and you just, you believed him. You believed that he could really kick some ass. And he's a nice guy, a super nice guy. So I agree. You'll be, interviewing, you'll be interviewing Sonny coming in here in a little while, and you have to give Sonny a hard time because Sonny, Ricky Steamboat, was her man when she was a little girl, man. She loved Ricky Steamboat. <gasps> How do you know about me and Ricky Steamboat? The only thing I know about Ricky Steamboat is his legend, you know? So when I got into wrestling, I really didn't know a lot of old school, but, um, you know, his name is, still comes up over and over. Who told you? Joe! Didn't he? Animal told you. Diligence. Animal stooged me off, didn't he? Tell me about Ricky. A month ago at WrestleMania, we're standing there, me, Animal, and Ricky. And I, it was only the first time I actually really spent any time talking to Ricky. And when I was a kid, he was like my favorite. I had the biggest crush on him when I was like 10 years old. Favorite baby face. I, and I, I had told Joe all this ahead of time. So we're standing there talking, and Joe goes, Animal, Animal goes, Ricky, you know, when she was 10 or, or 13, I forget what it was, she had the biggest crush on you. She said you were the best baby face ever and had the smoothest dra um, arm drag in the business. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. He totally just humiliated me and embarrassed me right there the night after Hall of Fame at WrestleMania to Ricky Steamboat. Ricky attracted the young girls, and he attracted the white meat babyface people, you know. It wasn't the hardcore babyface like Hawk and I were. 
or if we made a young girl with pigtails coming after us, or, or grandmas wanting to kiss babies. We, we just had the rebel guys at 20 years old to kill them, you know. This is, okay, this is how bad it was when I was a kid. I used to sit there in my room and practice writing my first name with his last name. That's how corny I was. But I was 10. <laughs> I was 10 years old. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, he was, he was dreamy back then. He still is, even at his age. This guy burst onto the scene in the early 80s and was the blueprint babyface. No frills, no gimmicks. He had the physique, the demeanor, and the athleticism. His in-ring work is responsible for many matches that would top a most exciting matches list. Your number three babyface, Ricky Steamboat. Definitely Ricky Steamboat. The guy can work unbelievable. He's a, a, a good guy. It's somebody that every heel would want to work with. And I think he was known all over the world for, you know, how he, how his matches were. You wanted to watch his matches. This is a little biased because I think Ricky Steamboat's the best of all time, babyface. I can argue that. I could take the point of argument with that, but I'm not going to because Ricky Steamboat, in my eyes, is the epitome of a gentleman, of a man, of a babyface. Steamboat was good. I mean, uh, I worked with Steamboat a lot of times. Um, there again, you're talking about the top five. I would say Tommy Rich should be up in there. I mean, maybe he is. Maybe he's in, uh, He's in the top ten of all time. Doesn't surprise me if that's high. Uh, I would say great baby faces far as in ring ability but as far as being over I think he's a little uh, I think it, I think he somebody put him on that list a little higher than he should be one of the greatest white now there's a different baby face that's a white meat baby face for his error good I mean he was the same the same I mean I'm I know of Ricky and seen some of his stuff because people that have seen any of my past interviews realize that I never watched wrestling growing up I was lucky and was in the right place at the right time. So I never watched a lot of that, but have seen footage of him and just the way he moves and the way he, you know, same thing again. Physical appearance it was great. He would, had that charisma charm. You know, he had a charm to him that people dug. Uh, now that surprises me, and I'm a big Ricky Steamboat fan, but it surprises me that he is above the rock. I, I, I would have to put, uh, I'd put Rock way ahead of Steamboat too, because Rock, uh, and there again, I, I, I would even put uh, a guy like Tommy Rich ahead of, of Ricky Steamboat. Steamboat was not that big of a baby face in the WWF days. He was uh, underneath mid-card guy with the Intercontinental Championship. Now, does that make you a great baby face? Was he, was he good? Yes, he was. Jimmy Snuka was a great baby face when I worked with him. Uh, and I'm not knocking Ricky's work at all, but when you put it in perspective with great baby face, Dusty Rhodes was a great baby face in his era. Uh, so, so there was a, I don't know, the fans are kind of off a little bit on that list. Well, Ricky, again, there was a good looking guy, um, smooth, good interviewer, sincere interviewer. And there's the case of the individuals you've already talked to. The people actually thought that they had to get behind Ricky. Because if he didn't, Murdoch was going to beat the crap out of him. Uh, So-and-so was going to beat the crap out of him. So we got to give him some support. Mulligan was going to tear his throat out. So let's cheer for him. Come on. And he would respond by listening to that and, and coming up and making a little comeback and firing up, firing up. So they felt they're actively involved in